Hello everyone, myself Ravi. So in this video, I'm going to discuss with you what are the basics that you should know before you start your CD1 subject preparation. What are the prerequisites of the subject CD1? What are the concepts involved in the subject? What is the exam pattern? How is the exam conducted? And some personalized steps from my side how to study for CD1 examination. So this is the first exam that you generally write when you start your actual profession. So you should know some things in advance how to prepare for it. And I'll, I'm going to discuss the required things with you today. So the first thing that you should know is you should be very good with mathematics when you start with CD1. The basic mathematics required in CD1 is algebra. So in algebra, you need to know how to solve quadratic equations, simultaneous equations. You should be very good with indices, log functions, exponential functions, etc. You should be very good with calculus mathematics, limits, derivatives, integration. You should also be comfortable with numerical methods, solving equations using interpolation, extrapolation when other methods fail to uh, solve that equation. So these are the prerequisites of mathematics. You also need to know some concepts of statistics before you start CD1. So concept of statistics that requires how to work with random variables, how to assign probabilities, how to find mean, median, mode, standard deviation, variance, quartiles, etc. for random variables and some basic idea of what are the statistical distributions. This concept of statistics is used in one of the chapters of CD1. The rest of the use is only mathematical parts. So that is the prerequisite. If you're good with it, go ahead with CD1. The next thing that you should know is what are the concepts involved with CD1. So it's as the name suggests, it is financial maths. So it's all about finance. So here you try to understand first what are the interest rates and cash flows. What is the basic concept of interest rates? How to find present value or future value of various kinds of cash flows. So when I say present value, it means that if some amount is payable to someone after 10 years from now, what is the value of that amount today? The value of money keeps on changing with time. You all agree with that? So how to find the present value of that amount is something that you should know very well. It will not necessarily be of a single cash flow. It can be of a multiple cash flow or a very complex uh, cash flow functions and how to find future value. So if you invest 100 rupees right now in a bank, if you keep it in a bank or a mutual fund or somewhere else where you earn interest, what is the amount that you will have after a certain number of years after this interest has been accumulated by various methods. So there are different ways of adding interest rates. There are different uh, functions of the cash flows. So you deal with these functions and interest rates. You understand them thoroughly and then you start applying them in practical business problems that you study here. The first thing that you study is loans. So you study in CT1 what is the structure of the loan? How is the loan? Uh, what is the mathematics involved in the loan? And how to uh, structure a loan completely for a bank? The second thing that you study here is project appraisal. Project appraisal involves finding out the feasibility of the projects. So you tell your business clients how feasible is the project they are planning to enter into. The third thing that you study here is investment appraisal. You have done some investment through some various methods and various techniques you have used. Now you try to find out what is the rate of return that you have earned through that investment. You also try to understand a lot of theory of the different investment products available in the market. So basic investment products available in the market are debentures, bonds, uh, equities, shares, derivatives, futures, options, swaps, etc. So there is a theory of these concepts involved. There is also a chapter which involves or which teaches you how to price this investment products effectively, how to find the market value or fair value of this investment products. There is also a chapter which deals with forward contracts, arbitrage concepts. Then there is a chapter which deals with the term structure of interest rates. So as the term of the interest, as the term of this uh, investment varies, the interest rate or the returns earned on this investment also varies. So how to take this into calculation is what is one of the chapter teaches you. The another topic involved is immunization. Immunization is where you try to create a portfolio which is immunized to small changes in interest rates. So when interest rate changes, the value of the portfolio should not become negative for you. One of the concept involved is stochastic modeling of interest. Rates. Stochastic modeling is where you do not know in advance what interest rate you're going to earn. So for example, say you invest in a mutual fund. You do not know what is the uh, rate of return you're going to earn. So you try to assign some probabilities and you try to find the average rate of return or you try to find the average or variance of the accumulated value through that investment. So these are the topics. I'll make uh, another video explaining the uh, concept involved in each and every chapter thoroughly. That will be in the next video that you can see. And this I'm not going deep into the chapters. I just uh, took you through the topics involved. The next thing that you need to understand is the exam pattern of CD1. The exam pattern is quite different from the other patterns that we see in other exams or you must have seen in other exams. So it's basically a 100 marks exam. It's a written exam. You go to the exam center, you write a paper physically. There is no multiple choice question markings. 
it's something that you have where you have to solve it's not theory it's practical paper so the questions generally test your calculations they test your application they test your knowledge everything so there are some questions which are practical uh, questions so where you read the question you analyze the question you solve them numerically and give your expert comments on the question there are some questions which are just theory the the questions which are just theory which just checks your knowledge uh, basically consists of say around 10 to 15 percent of the paper the the questions that involve only calculation generally involves 20 percent of the paper and the questions which test your application majorly forms the big chunk 60 to 70 percent of the paper so while studying for the subject you have to make sure that you focus more on the application part of each and every topic that you study right from chapter one till the end of the syllabus so application of each and every topic is very important what i would suggest you as a study guideline is practice questions by writing them do not just go through the questions if you just go through the question look at the solution you feel that you have understood it well and you'll be able to do it in the exam it will not work that way there is a high probability that you understand the questions before the exam you know how to solve it but when you go to the exam center you may forget everything you have studied and as soon as the exam gets over you come out to the examination center and you'll suddenly suddenly remember everything what was supposed to be written so this happens when there is a lack of practice so make sure you do adequate writing practice so that you do not go blank during the examination time that 3 hour time is a very pressured uh, it's a time when you are under lot of stress so may so learn how to perform in the, well in that stress and that will that can only be done if you have a adequate practice from the beginning of the uh, preparation days so you should start preparing at least 3 months in advance 3 to 4 months in advance you should have writing practice the the material that you should use to prepare for the examination is the one that is provided by the institute so you have to purchase this material from the institute's website if you if you're writing the exam from indian institute you can uh, well log into your login id's respect login id and buy the material for, from there if you're writing from the uk examination if you still need the material then you can log into the uh, you can approach the acted website and you have the material available over there so there is a there is a course notes then they also give you x series they also give you question banks they give you mock papers all these are very important what i would suggest as a course of uh, as a method of method to follow to study is first go through your course notes thoroughly then do question banks along with x series x series should be something you should write in exam cell situation that those are like test question banks for practice once you're done with all these three the very important next comes is the past 10 year exam papers so once you're done with question bank x series and chapters go to the website the respective institute from which you're writing the exam download the papers those are generally freely available and attempt those in the exam cell situation sitting 3 hours straight without any break without any distractions so you'll realize what how uh, well you need to manage your time how slow are you or how fast are you how good are you at the concept when applying in an exam cell situation in a stressful situation so make sure you practice adequately question bank x series the course notes and the 10 years exam cell question if you do this, this four things thoroughly i am definitely sure if you have if you have been serious about the solving part you will definitely crack the exam in the first attempt itself <coughs> make sure you understand the concepts rather than just memorizing them make sure you do writing practice and do not omit any topic of cd1 any topic so let's say chapter 5 so a uh, chapter 5 of the course notes or chapter 1 to 7 for that matter are generally basic chapters which do not carry a huge weightage in the examination but a uh, few uh, attempts back there was a question on chapter 5 which came for 19 marks so it may happen that some topics which are generally seems less relevant may carry a question which is huge which may be of 19 to 20 or 50, 25 marks for that matter so do not omit anything there may be a chapter which is which looks huge but there may be a question worth 5 marks only so anything can happen the exams are unpredictable the questions are unpredictable the pattern of the question is unpredictable there are no options you have to write compulsory all the questions so make sure do not omit anything study everything have writing practice <coughs> for any more information that you require you can just comment your queries in the uh, comment section i'll definitely get back to you as soon as possible thank you